Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald Crafting, and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a wall picture. And what I'm using is I've got some cardboard that I had from a cardboard box, and I cut the two flaps off the side and glued them together, like so. And they're going to be the piece that goes on the wall. And then what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using this picture, and now this is available to everybody because I'm not sure if you're aware, but I've made some colouring books of all the flowers and things that I draw and they're all available on my website they're really really cheap I've kept them as cheap as possible and there's three different ones there's some mandalas and there's also the flower ones you can buy them individually or get a discount and buy them in bulk so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut this out as neatly as possible so I've printed it on mixed media paper which is quite thick it's like a thick cardstock so what I'm going to do is cut this out and once I cut this out I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do next to make it all textured and 3D-ish. So I've cut this out now and it is still a bit flimsy and I've cut all the leaves off and kept the leaves back because what I shall do is I shall do these separately which I'll show you in a minute and then put them on so they've got more of a 3D appearance. Now what I want to do is I need to now attach this to some card and cut it out again because I want to make sure it's actually really quite nice and sturdy. And there are a couple of ways that you could do that. One of them is you could glue this on now and cut round it, but I'm not going to do that because I'm likely to mess it up like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just go round the outline of this using a pencil and then I shall cut out what I'm left and then glue it together. I've cut those out now and all I need to do is stick this to that and that's going to be fairly easy and all I'm going to use to stick that down is some white glue that I've already got mixed up that's got a bit of water in it as well and that'll give it a really good stick <laughs> that will stick really well and then I'll let that dry for about I don't know 10-15 minutes because it's quite warm in here today so it's not going to need an awful lot more and the cardboard is quite absorbent as well, so it should dry fairly quickly. So this is dry enough now to do the next stage on it. And what I'm going to do is, and I've glued the leads down here, and once they're dry, I'll cut them out. So what I've got is, I've got my glue gun, and it's all nice and hot, the glue on here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go around the edge of each leaf with my glue gun and get a bit of raised dimension on here. And I'm going to go around each leaf like this, let it cool, and then I'm going to do another stage to it as well. So it's not just a flat image when it comes to decorating this. And it's quite easy to do, as long as your glue's hot enough and you you don't be impatient, which is what I normally am with my glue gun. I try and use it before it gets hot. Then it does leave quite a nice little trail behind. As you can see now, that's got some nice texture on there and some raised bits. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover it completely with brown paper all the way around and push that down and let that dry. And I've, I've done this on other projects. It's really easy to do. And this is just the paper that comes with the packaging you get from places like Amazon and things like that when they pack out your pots and boxes and things. I'm just going to brush on a good dollop of this white glue, wet my paper like so, so it's nice and wet and that way I can mould it around when I need to and then push it in so it gets nicely covered like so and when that dries that will dry giving me that raised bit of texture there. I shall just go around the whole thing coating it in paper until it's all coated. That'll also make it quite sturdy but as well as it will give it a, 
a new dimension and texture ready for painting. These have all dried now and they've dried nice and firm as you can see. And it's nice and smooth. Now a little bit of that texture will come through which is great. I've also cut out some more leaves because I think it needed it and this is also lovely and dry as well and it's got nice and firm. I haven't done these bits because that's the stems that are coming through and I want those bits to be further set into the background. So what I need to do now is I need to put some more details on this and on the leaves. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some cotton. It will only barely show up but that's all I want. I just want it to be kind of there as a little bit of texture and a little bit of detail. How I put these details on is I cut some cotton like that and then I just paint on some really thin white glue all over. And the reason I use white glue is because unlike other glues and hot glue and things like that, when it dries, it dries completely flat. So it's not going to affect the actual look of the cotton. It's just going to be stuck to the leaf. And like I said, this is only going to give a little bit of an accent, but it will just give enough because I don't want it to look too unrealistic. And then all I do is I just pick up the little bits of cotton that I've cut up randomly with the brush because I find that that's easier and then pop it onto the leaf in the shape that I've already drawn on the veins. And if you, you think they're too straight, just use your brush to pull them around in. You know, because nature isn't uniform. And any bits that hang over the edge, once it's dry, we'll just cut those with the scissors and then that will be done. And it, it, it might look fiddly, but actually it's not too bad and doesn't take too long to do at all i've already done a lot of them and what i will do is i will not only do the leaves like this but also the centers of here coming off here and some bits coming off the edges of all the petals as well just to give that a little bit of texture well, this is all dried now and as you can see where i've put the little bits of cotton that's all dry and that didn't take too long to do and it's kind of finished off those leaves really nicely let me zoom into that And that's not going to be really prominent. It's just going to give the leaves a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. And the same for this. But what I also need to put in, I also need to put in some bits here from where the, I believe it's a stamen. It might be a stamen. I don't know. I'm, I'm not very good with botanicals. So what I did was I was wrapping some brown paper soaked in the white glue around these toothpicks and they've come out really really well they've come out nice so all I need to do as you can see here is I've got one done I just need to think about where that's going to be so it's going to be there so I need to cut it down to about there I just want to cut it a little bit longer than what I need it and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in here where that hot glue bubble is but obviously that's hot glue so what I will do is I will heat my screwdriver up just a little bit until it's hot enough to melt that glue and make myself a, a nice little hole there. Pop it in there while it's still hot, wiggle it around a little bit and that hot glue in there that's just melted will also adhere this little stamen and then I can cut that down a little bit more if I want to or I, as I'm quite happy with that at the moment I can just glue that down using some all-purpose glues and then I've got my actual stamens as well all around there. They're all on there now and I've covered them with a piece of paper as well and a little bit of this glue and my light keeps going out so I apologise for that. Now what I'm going to do is I've got some of these really tiny weeny weeny little balls as you can see that are part of some nail art that I used on my other channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick all those or, or stick some of those on here so it looks a little bit more bobbly as if it is a stamen and see what that looks like I'm just going to put a bit of glue on there like that and they're so tiny and so light that actually they should just adhere to that and then when it dries they should just carry on being stuck on there and i'm going to use a paintbrush to pick those up with and pop those down they're very staticky and then just pop them on there. When I paint these, it might not look very good. So I may end up putting them on again 
afterwards. I haven't too many on there, just a few, but they should stay on there nicely, ready for when I want to paint this and as soon as this glue is dry. I just think it gives it another little effect. The glue and everything has dried now, so I'm really pleased. But what I have done is I have made a change. I don't know if you remember, these were in here, more like that. And I felt it was too blocky when I was testing it out to see what it looked like. So I cut those bits out, just using a craft knife, and then just added some paper over that to cure those edges. And actually, I'm much happier with that now because that will sit there just like that in there and I think it will look a lot nicer with the leaves going around the edge. It's kind of, I don't know, it's giving it a bit more character than being just blocky. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you have left it as it was or do you think it's better to change it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint these back bits. I'm going to use acrylic paints for these and I want this to have a fancy black, so the Arteza iridescent paint on this because I just love how this comes out and I think it looks looks great it'll probably need a couple of coats but that's fine because it's quite warm here today and it's going to dry really quickly and i just like the way that the iridescent black works and i think it will be a nice background for the hibiscus when they go on so i'm going to go ahead and paint this up and then i'll show you how i'm going to paint the hibiscus this is all dry now and i'm ready to paint it i speeded this up so you don't have to watch each single brush stroke and what i'm doing is i'm using a yellow okra here and i'm going to be covering the whole of the cardboard flower with this both the front and the back and making sure that I get into every little nook and cranny of this because I don't want any of the actual paper colour to be showing through because this is definitely my base colour and it works really really well as a base colour. It Once I put the other colours on they're a little bit more translucent and this base colour kind of shows through which really does help. So as you can see I'm going in all the sides and ensuring that every last bit of this is nicely covered, including the back and all the edges as well, because it's really important. If you'd like to buy me a coffee just to say thank you and help support this new channel, which doesn't make any money at all, then the link is in the description and your names will go on to the coffee board for next month as well and appear in all the videos. It's really appreciated and it does help me to be able to buy more stuff. So now I've done that, what I'm doing is I'm just painting the little bobbles that I put on and they covered really well. I was so pleased with those. And now using a very fine brush and some black acrylic paint, you could use a pen for this, I suppose. I'm just going over those bits. Links to the coloring books, by the way, are in the description below. And there are three new coloring books coming out, Mythical Creatures, Sea Fish, and also butterflies as well. And they'll be available very, very soon, if not by the time this video goes on. So what I'm doing now is I'm dry brushing a brighter yellow over the top of this. And as you can see, I dab the paint off the brush because I do want that color to come through after it has uh, been put on, this top coat has been put off on to give it that dimension and a two-tony effect and make it look a little bit more natural. And then using a bright yellow, and that's a bright yellow that I've actually mixed a little bit of white in, I'm just going through highlighting all the bits that I think need highlighting. Well, I've finished painting it now, and I've painted all my leaves, and I've painted those green, and obviously leaves are green. <laughs> then I dry brushed over them to give them a little bit of texture. And what I've also done is I've coated them in some satin varnish because I've used satin because I don't want it to have a real gloss finish but I want it to have a bit of a sheen and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing on these hibiscus now and this won't take long to dry it should this is a, only a water-based acrylic paint so I'm just going in and giving it a very thin coat I'm only going to give it the one coat because I don't want it to be like really heavy and I'm not bothered if I miss a few bits in it either because I think that will all help. But I think it will just give it that little bit of a finished feel to it by having a sheen. It's amazing what you can upcycle out of cardboard and make something really quite bright with it. And also it gives another use to anything that you've coloured in using any of my colouring in books. The great thing about using this type of varnish is 
you can just wash your brush out in water. So this is all dry now and I'm really pleased with how it's coming out and I've decided that this is how I'm going to arrange it all with the leaves and the hibiscus and I'm only going to use some hot glue to pop these leaves down with. It won't need a lot, right in the middle, there and then pop it on there like so. I'm doing the leaves first because I now know which way round I want everything to be. And obviously I want the leaves coming from underneath the actual plant itself. So what I'm doing is I'm putting these leaves on and then I'm popping the little bits of the leaf stem underneath the hibiscus themselves. The actual hibiscus itself will hold these two parts of the frame together once it's glued on there. All I now need to do is make a decision on where that is glue is going to go. It's going to go there like that. I can put glue there like that. Bit of glue on there. Bit of glue there. Bit of glue there. And a bit of glue there. And now I can just pop this onto here like so. Making sure that's all lined up. Push that in. Let that glue dry. And then once that glue's dry, I can then just put a hook on the back and that should stay together. And it's really easy to put a hook on the back. All I need to do is turn this over and get my glue gun. Look for the center of this. I could do this, obviously, with a ruler, but that would be too sensible. And then pop my hook in there and let that cure up. And then all I need to do is hang it on the wall, which I will do in a second and show you what it looks like hanging on the wall. Well, that's all finished now and I've hung it up and it's hung up near the fuse box and obviously my dustpan and brush on the wall. But I'm really pleased with that. I like how it's come out. Let me just zoom into that as well. And I mean, you could make these any size that you wanted. You don't have to make them small. You could put two or three of these on one piece. I'm really pleased with that. I think it's come out really pretty and you could do lots of different things with it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my notifications. And there's gonna be three new coloring books coming out very, very soon as well. And the link to those can be found on my website, which is also in the description below, along with the links to everything else that I've used. Don't forget, if you'd like to say thank you and buy me a coffee to help keep me going and support this channel, because at the moment I don't get any revenue from Google or YouTube for this, every bit is really appreciated and the buy me a coffee link is in the description below. Be sure to check out the video that's coming on the screen next, and that's again where I upcycle some cardboard and a cheese triangle box into a steampunk thing. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye.